What's up, Daydreamers? This is Justin, your Ragtag Daydreamer, back again for another in the series of my Road to Fuji. Uh, I say it's my Road to Fuji because I am going to go uh, in a couple of weeks. I'll be going to Japan and I will be hiking Mount Fuji. I will be visiting um, uh, Gundam Base Tokyo. I will be visiting Dogo Onsen. Uh, check out my other videos if you would like to know more about my trip. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about how I made it affordable to go. Welcome to my channel. We're going on an adventure to Japan. Wow! <laughs> okay, so first things first. You really have to kind of get your mind around what the airfare is going to be. Uh, mine ended up being around $1,300, and it, that is a lot of money. But you have to also consider that a lot of people spend $2,000 on tickets round trip from America to Japan. So when that's considered, I got a pretty good deal. Um, I think uh, the last time I looked at, I think it was like preferred business or possibly first class. It's one of those higher classes. It was $22,000 round trip. I don't, I don't know who that's for. I, I don't, I don't know who that's for. That, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a car. That's a new car to me. So one of the things that I did, um, I, I definitely checked out the airfare around the time that I wanted to go. I looked at what days were um, cheaper and to fly out and fly in. I checked different airports. Um, the two closest international airports to me are Nashville and Atlanta. Check around. Make sure you know where your airports are and then do some price comparisons and really get it figured out. What I did um, I then moved on to selecting different days throughout a three to four week period of when I wanted to be there. I wasn't just strictly in and strictly out on certain dates. I really looked at a, at a period. So every time I would check, I would check to see if any of those days per w days of the week that were cheaper had changed. And then I also looked at what weeks were cheaper to fly there. Um, Eventually, I found a great deal with Kayak, and they had a, um, I think it was called a, a, a hacker fair, is what they called it. Um, what that essentially did was it made it so that I did not purchase my tickets f exactly from Kayak. They showed me the two different sites that I could go to to purchase my tickets, and then as they are in a bundle, it was, it was much cheaper. So... Um, that's another trick that I would really encourage you take a look at because that can save you a lot of money. But you might not know is the shots. Um, that's a little iffy. I did have to get uh, booster shots. I, I got most of the shots necessary to go out of the country uh, or what was recommended while I was in school. And then I found out about Japanese encephalitis. So Japanese encephalitis is something that is mosquito-borne. Uh, I'm going basically at the end of the rainy season in a country that's tropical. I'm probably going to get mosquito bit even if I, I use bug spray. Japanese encephalitis puts like one in four people in the hospital who contract it. I needed to get that shot. Now, another thing that I didn't realize is that that shot is a two-part shot. And it, for me, personally, just for me, prices and everything may, bear, may, may vary because I don't think my insurance covered it. I think it went towards my deductible. The shot is, for me, $270 per shot for a round of two shots that allows you to be immunized. Let that sink in. That's another round about $600 that I did not plan for. And to be honest, it, it almost ruined this trip for me. You have to take one shot, and then four weeks later, you have to go back and get the second shot. That second shot has to be at least one week from when you plan to be in the country. I got a little lucky because whenever I found this out and I went in and started the regiment and got my first shot, I scheduled the next shot. It'll be done July 1st. 
Um, and then I will be immunized to leave on the 11th. That's a 10 day gap. I came so close to not being able to meet that criteria and be immunized for this weird and really crazy disease I don't want. So please consider that. Look at it a month ahead of time. Get your plans in order. Now, transportation once I'm in Japan. So I looked up some stuff uh, on my phone and um, I want to show you guys what I found. What I found was my maximum journey on long range trains that are run by the JR rail systems and they also run the Shinkansen or the bullet trains that we talked about in my last episode. If I were to take it from Tokyo all the way to Dogo Onsen, I would have to travel through Kyoto, Osaka, and then farther out. That way and all the way back, yeah, yeah, over 500 American dollars. Basically, just in case anything was stopped, skipped, or extra expensive were involved that I didn't plan for, like taking another subway as a connector or something like that, just go ahead and round up to $600. $600 while I'm there just to get to main stations and cities where I want to visit. And what I found was the JR Rail Pass. The JR Rail Pass is a voucher, actually, that you get, and you have to turn it in at the JR Station, Japanese Rail Station um, office, that's linked to the airport or one of the other major offices for them. Um, you can turn it into them and then you can set it to start then or on a certain date of your trip and then all you have to do is that information is put in, they give you your actual Japanese rail pass or JR rail pass and you flash it before you go on one of those trains. They nod, they might stamp it, what have you, they make a mark, they scan it, whatever they got to do to make sure that they know you're using that pass for that train, and you go get on a non-reserved seat and take off. It's fantastic. Now, my total trip for those long-range trains, uh, we saw was going to be roughly $600, about $550 to $600, um, you know, just averaging, rounding up, okay? So I found that because it's in the last seven days I'm doing all my travel, I didn't get the 14 day, I got the seven day. The seven day was $270. So in other words, for less than $300, for less than $300, I will be able to travel all the entire large scope of the country that I wanted to. That's almost half. It's almost half, guys. Now some good news is, there are some local trains that are ran by JR that I could also use it on, so that's pretty great. Uh, they also have some bus services that I could also use the JR Rail Pass on if I have it activated at that time. More than likely, I'll have to pay for my own uh, trip. I'll normally, I, I think I'm going to take the bus to Fuji and back, um, and then my other um, subway and train rides and things like that that are not owned by JR. But just taking in consideration how much I save there, it's not going to be a problem. I, I don't foresee a problem with that. I think I'm still going to going to end up to the good whenever this trip is over. Now, I mentioned spreading out my stay from Airbnbs between Tokyo and Kyoto. In Tokyo, I'll be staying with a well, she looks like a grandma, an older lady who has a condo. Then. Uh, after five days of stay there, I'll be moving over to Kyoto. Uh, and that's where I'll have my base of operations there. From there, I'll be able to, um, within like a, I think a 30 or 40 minute train ride, I can visit Osaka on day trips and I can go all the way out to Dogo Onsen. And I'm already kind of like halfway across the country that way. Uh, so it's a shorter trip. I think it ends up being about a four hour trip if I don't miss any trains going out to Dogo Onsen from Kyoto. That's, that's rough. That's rough. I'm going to have to struggle to get back that day. So um, I will be in Kyoto for a, uh, a Matsuri, which is a Japanese summer festival. And I will uh, be able to go to what they call Gion Matsuri. And Gion Matsuri 
is a festival where they build giant, like, almost as big as a house sometimes, uh, lanterns. And people carry them through the streets. And they're these big depictions of really cool, you know, uh, historical figures and, and all kinds of stuff. So, in Tokyo and Kyoto, I'll be staying with these people. And I'm really excited to see what the little neighborhoods and things like that are like. I went on Google Maps and uh, looked at street views and those kind of things. And, and, and really, it's, it's the only way that I can see how you could make the most of your time and experience and your stay. Because you're staying with people in neighborhoods um, or um, in, in the second one, I think it was an old ryokan, which is like a um, an, an old style, like hundred or plus years ago. In um, you know, you're staying in these these more traditional settings. Uh, things are quieter. Um, I, I just I don't know. Something just felt right about it, especially because for twelve of my thirteen days, I have booked for a stay. My last day, I'm actually going to um, attempt to stay at a capsule hotel uh, before I go back to the airport. So I want to have that experience too. Um, the 12 out of the 14 or 12 out of the 13 days that I will be in country, though, uh, I ended up spending $300 total on my rooms. Yeah, so that's like two nights anywhere else, any hotel anywhere else except for a capsule. That's like two nights, and I got 12. So it, it's so cool. Uh, that's another way that I really saved money by being able to um, really not be picky about where I was staying, but also wanting to get off the beaten path a little bit and uh, you know see a little more of a day in the life of a Japanese person. And I hope that you also have a road to somewhere that you daydream about. Until next time, guys, if this was entertaining at all, if you liked it in the least, please do me a favor and thumbs up and subscribe. And if you want to see more about my trip to Japan and what road is leading me to where, I will be vlogging while I go on the trip and posting lots of pictures to Instagram. So make sure if you haven't liked me on Instagram, do that. It's in the show notes below. And if you happen to like other Japanese things, like uh, these pictures that I have behind me, these are Gundams or Gunpla boxes back here. The Gundam franchise uh, was is a Sunrise and Bandai kind of thing, and there's these great kits that you can get, like plastic model kits, you know, race cars and military vehicles and things like that. Well, they make these kits as well, and they're just giant robots that are piloted by people, and uh, you know, they're really cool if you're into that kind of thing. And if you want to see more of that, please check my other playlists, because after this trip, I'm going to be devoting most, if not all, my time to that. So. Until next time, keep on daydreaming. Go out there and start making a plan to bring your daydreams true. And I'll see you next time.